Hi friends! How are you today? It's Peggy Noe from PrettyPaperCards.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I'm here today with my little Yorkshire Terrier Ellie. I had to wake her up from her nap today to get her to, to snatch her up so that she she could be on the show. That's what I tell her. We're doing our show. Yeah. So she's, she's kind of in a daze. Let me check and make sure we're on. Okay, I see that we're on. That's a good thing. Um, we've got a fun card to make today. We are going to make a, a fun fold card that I just learned yesterday. I've seen it before, but I didn't know exactly how to make it. And so I just learned today, and I'm really excited to show it to you today. So I want to thank you for tuning in, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube. She's looking for a place to put her little head because she's a sleepy girl. Yeah. <laughs> it's warm here, you guys. Linda Brady, Tammy, hi. It's 77 on our patio. Tracy, good to see you. And so it's a nice warm afternoon and that's what she's doing is she wants to just kind of fall asleep. <laughs> she's like, let me fall asleep, please. <laughs> Connecticut. How's the weather in Connecticut, Tracy? Let us know. I heard there was even snow back there. But you know, and I, so I'm kind of wondering, let us know if, if there's snow. Um, I know you guys are having a, Renee, good to see you. I know people are having a, a kind of a unusual spring with snow and rain. Um, and we have had rain. We had rain last week, and we're supposed to have rain and thunderstorms on Easter Sunday, which is kind of unheard of. I've lived here, um, let's see, maybe f over 50 years, and it's I don't recall rain on Easter. I'm sure it must have. Rainy and cool in Virginia, Linda. Okay. I'm sure it I'm sure it must have rained here on Easter, but I sh I'm telling you, I really don't remember it at all. And they had that little, you know, that little lightning thing on the on the weather. Um, so they even expect, um, I guess, thunder. She's trying to figure out, you're trying to figure out how to lay down, but we're on the show. You have to say hi to people. Tell them hello. She's got a little yellow bow for spring. Hi, Kay. Eleanor, good to see you. Um, wonderful to have you guys and it is spring and we're gonna make a little springy card today I was telling them uh, we're gonna make a fun fold that I just learned yesterday so um, Linda it's been raining there in Pennsylvania all day yeah and you know rain is so good I know I know our our land needs it I know but it's just so unusual for San Diego to have as much rain as we've had kind of these past two years. It's really, it's been a lot. Well, happy Wednesday. Good to see you guys. Happy middle of the week. Um, it, the time is going fast. I can't believe this Sunday is going to be Easter. It's really come early this year. I know you all know that. Um, so prize, yes. Today's prize, you get a choice of prizes, a choice between two different prizes. Um, Tina, hi, Granite Falls, North Carolina. Wonderful. So I'm wondering what your signs of spring are. Here, um, I've had doves trying to make nests in my back patio and in my front entryway. I haven't seen that they've actually done it yet. And, oh, Kimberly, hi. Big snowstorm in Minnesota yesterday. I heard, yes, that's what I heard about on the news. Oh, boy. So we're talking about the signs of spring. And I've had doves trying to nest. And then we have two fig trees. And one big one is in the front yard. It We have those green figs. You know, there are the green and then the deep purple. And we have the ones that are green. Um, they, you know, they mature to a little bit of a yellowish green, but they're coming in already. Little baby figs are already coming in our tree. We end up with so many that we, the neighbors come and get them and we give them to friends because when they start coming in, they're just so, so many that you can't eat them in time because they're only ripe for a day or two and then, then they get weird. 
but anyway that those are our signs of spring so I don't know what yours are I'm sure that for those of you in the rain and the snow that will you'll have more signs a little bit further on um, but like I said we're having ours now so what is new let's talk about news Colleen Ludicky good to see you very good to see you what is new well I let me just turn this down just a bit okay so you all know that um, the new catalog, the new annual catalog begins for customers on May 1st. Linda Leonhardt, you see daffodils bloom. Oh, we don't have too many bulbs out here um, because it doesn't freeze, but oh, how wonderful to see daffodils blooming in the spring. I mean, I could plant them and I think, but it's not a big deal like it is back east and in other parts of the country. And I just love bulbs. I don't know if a zinnia is a bulb. We're going to use the zinnias today. And I don't think they're a bulb, but maybe some of you in bulb country would know um, since we're going to use this, the zinnia bundle. Okay, what's new with news? Retiring products. Since we have a new catalog coming on May 1st. Oh, hi, Jean. Good to see you. I don't see the comments. I know. I don't see them at the same time. Um... I, do, I don't have an, I need to use an iPad if I'm going to see them at the same time. I actually am kind of working on getting one so that I can see all the comments at the same time. Oh, you, Tammy, yes, Tammy, who lives here, just buys cut daffodils. Marsha Long, good to see you. You did have spring <laughs> for a short time, Kimberly. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to look at the comments right now. I'm going to talk to you about what you need to know. May 1st, the new annual catalog, the 2425 annual catalog, I'm going to put her down, she needs to go back in her bed, will be live to customers. Demonstrators can order the from the pre-order beginning on April 2nd. I got to order early because I went to on stage, but all other demonstrators order uh, can order beginning April 2nd for the pre-order. Hi, Roz. Good to see you. So if you are not a demonstrator and you want to pre-order from the new annual catalog, get the starter kit, get the starter kit, get the starter kit. That's all I can say. It's too much fun to get stuff early. And in addition, you have more assurance of getting it before it becomes so popular and it runs out for a while. I mean, all of this is annual catalog, so we'll all be available for an entire year but if they have a run on something and there are some beautiful things then it might go out but we as demonstrators get to order first remember that so if you're not a if you're not a demonstrator diane emerson good to see you i recommend that you get the starter kit right away so okay um, so what we're doing now, Deborah Rogers, good to see you, and Diane Emerson. Um, so right now, what we're doing, we have the last chance lists. I put them on my blog, and I put them on uh, my Facebook page that you're on if you're on Facebook today. So look at everything that's last chance. There are a lot more things on sale that have been, have been on sale in the past. So you'll want to check those last chance lists and see what's on sale. Some of the dyes are 50% off, you guys. Quite a few are 40%. I did make a nice haul at On Stage, Kimberly. I really did. Thank you for watching from Minnesota, Deborah. So you need to check out the last chance list. And I'm telling you, be ready for April 9th. And I looked at the calendar. It's not next Tuesday, but it's the following Tuesday. So about a week and a half, almost two full weeks. So you want to get your list ready and get in there pronto to get those sale items because they're going to go quick, those things that are marked down, and mostly dies. So I'll keep publishing the list off and on until the 9th and on the 9th so that, um, so that you, can, you can get your list ready for those things that you want. Great prices. I've talked about the fact that basic items, the prices are going up slightly, like 50 cents, a dollar. That includes cardstock, envelopes, just almost everything you think of as a basic, you know, adhesives. So regarding those things, get anything you need. Stock up on your basics before May 1st and even sooner, like now. I saw that the very vanilla 12 by 12 paper is already gone. Now, I think 
that could one reason for that could be I don't think that carries over into the new catalog but I do want you to know stock up on your basics um, alrighty retiring in colors this is what goes first these beautiful retiring in colors I have really liked these my favorite I've told you is sweet sorbet but I've enjoyed all of them so Tahitian Tide Orchid Oasis Parakeet Party, Sweet Sorbet. This is the one I haven't used as much. Um, Starry Sky, but I use that in the I use that for the holidays. So if you want, if you need ink refills, anything for those, get those right away. Avanel, good to see you. And then, just because I can and I have the new in colors, I just gotta show them to you again. These are my favorite in colors for a long time, and it's because I love the pastels and they're all pastel. So, do you mind if I practice on you? I'm just going to practice a little bit because I need to learn the names. Okay, the, this purple is Petunia Pop. And if you know and I say it wrong, let me know because I know some of you are demonstrators. Um, Summer Splash. This is the one I, I forget most often. Summer Splash. And it's very close to um, Shy Shamrock. But they are different. You can see that they're different. So, Summer Splash and Shy Shamrock, okay? Then Peach Pie, Peach Pie, that's it. And my favorite, Pretty in Pink. Love, 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 I love pink, and so this is my definite favorite. So you are gonna love the new in colors. This is another reason, get your starter kit, sign up to be a demonstrator, and you can order beginning April 2nd you can get that's right after Easter two days after Easter you can get these you can pre-order them along with everybody else you're gonna love it you're gonna love it okay all right oh I have a new faith creations class to go that's um, pr that I'm pre letting you pre-order right now I'm closing the pre-order on Friday here's the little flyer for it it's a stamp set that is going to continue in the um, online exclusives. They're going to continue it over in the online exclusives. It's called Quiet Reflection. And I'll tell you what, I, I love a lot of things about it. And you know, Julia, good to see you. Mario on YouTube wants to know, Mario Garcia, do you know when demos will receive catalogs? They're on their way. They were mailed out. And, but they mail them by bulk mail. I've seen that some in the um, in the country have started receiving them, but I think it was more up north, but I've only seen a couple. So we should start getting them. I have a little thing on my team page um, for everybody to report when they get it. And my team is different places around the country. So I've got my feelers out. So as soon as we, as soon as I hear, I'm definitely gonna let you know Julia, yes. So this is the stamp set for my Faith to Go class that is currently on, I'm, that you can currently pre-order. And I'll tell you the reason I love it, because it's, it's really meaningful. So sorry for your loss. We, we need this. We need these cards. This is, oh, Renee got yours today. Where, remind me where you are, Renee. Were you the one from Minnesota? Um, I get, I kind of forget. So remind us where you are. See, they're on the way. Catalogs are on the way to demonstrators. Okay, I'm gonna go, I get distracted, easily distracted. So what I love about this stamp set, and you may have missed it, I feel like people missed it in the annual uh, that's retiring, Columbus, Ohio, okay, thanks, um, is that it? it is kind of quiet. It's like a sleeper and it's for difficult times and that is when I most love to send a card in fact I I need to send one because um, I have a there's a gentleman from church I know he and his wife and he is having a really hard time in the hospital and so I've got their address yesterday and I need to send the card um, and so that some of the sentiments they're small so I'm going to read them to you praying for his comfort to soften the sadness and bring you peace and then God is our refuge and strength. So it, it is Christian based. To remember is to give life to those we've loved and lost. And 
the friendship of a pet is one of life's greatest gifts. So it has a pet sentiment. Along with the larger ones, you're on my mind and sorry for your loss. And then these two um, image stamps, they're just kind of, <clears throat> I just want to say, um, I don't know, they're just kind of thought provoking or just, I don't know, they're just nothing in particular. They're, they just, because that's what you want. You don't want anything big for people to concentrate on when they're having a difficult time. So this is the stamp set. And you can order it with the stamp set for $65. Email me, Peggy at prettypapercards.com. And the kit alone is $45. I'll give you the registration link. And I'm giving a slight discount on the stamp set because I think it's so important. You won't be paying any sales tax or shipping on the stamp set itself. I will pay that. So here are the sample cards. The cards that you'll make are, they're not, they're, they're, they're simple because of the type of card they are. Look, this one has a cutout from the paper. You're gonna be getting some paper, which is um, Forever Love paper, designer series paper. And here's the one, sorry for your loss. And here's the one, um, praying for his comfort. They're really beautiful cards. You'll have plenty left over to make more and you'll have the stamp set and I really, I only do sets that I love and sets that I think are meaningful when I go to, when I do any of my classes to go. Thank you, Tammy. They're soft. Hi, Vicki Eakins. Yes, it's a much needed stamp set, Roz. It was one of the first ones that you had to get. I am very um, happy also about the pet um, sentiment on there. So um, if you're interested, you have till Friday, email me and I'll get you the get you the registration link. All right, ready to make a fun fold card? Okay, let's turn you down. And there we go. Let me see if I can make sure to get enough light on here. We are making an easel card. And here's what we're using today, Simply Zinnia. I checked the um, inventory status report just a minute ago. These are both available. If you wanted the stamp set in French, that is not available. But these two are available right now. And they've been out, and so that's why it's taken me a while. Hi, Becky Schlossnagel, good to see you. I just got these a short time ago, and I've really been wanting to use them. I'm not using the dies today, but they're available. I'm just using the um, stamp set and the beautiful paper and I've had the paper for a while you guys it's so pretty and this is available and it's just gorgeous and this is an online exclusive so it's going to be around for a while it's just beautiful I cut some out of there you can see a little hole okay and this bright melon mambo and then we have I think that might be Garden Green. I haven't checked. And here's the back side of that. If you haven't gotten this Zinnia paper, definitely get it. And these go with the dies, I think. Like I said, I just got the dies, and I haven't played with those yet. So this paper is beautiful. And I'll tell you, this, it's so funny. With all this gorgeous, gorgeous color, this is my favorite sheet of this paper. It's petal pink. And I really like a true pink, but what I love is the little spots. I just love a pretty little spot, you know? I don't know if you feel that way, but that's how I feel. Okay, so I'm going to show you the card we're going to make today, which is... It's in a way simple, but that's because it's a fun fold. So here's the pretty, pretty um, paper that I just told you about. And here's the stamp and it's called an easel card. I know you guys know it. I've just never made one, and I saw a friend make one yesterday. And let me hold it up a little bit. I saw her make it on her live. She's one of um, Mary Fish's Stampin' Pretty Pals, which I am. Mary Fish is my upline. And we have so many amazing artists and designers on our in, in the Stampin' Pretty Pals. And if you get the starter kit and become a demonstrator under me, you also automatically join Mary Fish's group. So that's a bonus. 
But anyway, it's called an easel card, and I saw Beth making it, and I just loved it, and I wanted to try it with my new Zinnia set. So it opens like this, and you know, I could color in the Zinnias. I thought about it, but then I thought they are so beautiful on their own. I just didn't want to because I think the card being a fancy fold, fun fold, is enough. And here's how it works, okay? It has a fold back there so that when they, and here's the envelope. Of course, I had to stamp the Zinnias on the outside. Hi, Lori Mantovi. Good to see you. So when they get the card, it opens like this. But this little sentiment is popped up on dimensionals, and then the card becomes an easel card. Isn't that just cute? I love it. So I'm going to show you how to make it so you can have it in your, um, in your repertoire of fun folds, because it is a fun fold. Kimberly Colleen, you just got the bundle with, with the, ex yeah, I didn't get the embossing folder yet. The sequence I got those first thing but yes it is a beautiful set I think we're gonna use it for a long time so that's our sample I'm gonna put it up there so I can follow it and I'm gonna give you the measurements so if you want the measurements get a get something to write them down on here are all my goodies that we're gonna use to create the card and the first thing is we're going to figure out the fold now I've already, it takes a standard eight and a half by 11, no, eight and a half by five and a half piece of cardstock, and I'm using basic white. I've, let me get my glasses on so I can see. I've already scored it at the standard four and a quarter, and all you need to do is add an additional score line halfway between one edge and the four and a quarter, and half of four and a quarter is two and an eighth, so I'm just going to put that on two and an eighth right there and score that. Okay, and that creates what we need to, to form our easel card. So let me get my bone folder because that's what makes it work really nice is if you have these folds really burnished, really pressed down nice and tight. And you can see how this fold is half of that of the four, four and a quarter by five and a half. Okay, and this is how the easel card works. And what we're gonna do is put another front of the card right on top of this, and then it opens up like that. So I'll show you. So that's your scoring, your basic scoring. Okay, and then for, you can do it different ways, but I want you to notice, for this one, basically, my front and my inside, the base of it is the same. They're both the four and a quarter by five and a half, and they both have a piece of this pretty Zinnia petal pink paper that is four by five and a quarter. So we're just copying the background of both of those. Okay, so that means what we need is two sheets. And, oh no, I don't need two sheets because one is the inside of the card. I was getting confused there. Okay. So we have the inside of the card and the front piece that's going to create the easel. And so we have our two five and a half by four and a quarter, and then I've already pre-cut two of this piece um, at five and a quarter by four. And so all we do to get started before we start our stamping is create these because this is the background we need. You know what? I need to put a ribbon on one, so I'm going to just glue one down and then we're going to put our ribbon on. Glad I remembered that. So this is going to be the inside of our card. And I'm just going to fold that up and glue this piece down. It's really not a hard card to make. Once you make that fold, that's that's basically it, is that extra fold. Okay, now I'm going to set this aside because on this piece I want to put a ribbon. Now. I'm quite disappointed that our petal pink striped ribbon that's in that ribbon duo pack is Anthony. Hello, Hilda. Hello. Good to see you guys. And Carol from Connecticut, Cindy Howard from North Dakota. Good to see you guys. Okay, 
So I'm quite disappointed that my, this has really been my go-to ribbon. You guys know this, the one I color and I've had so much fun with. I've given it as prizes many times. And this is retiring. It's still, I think it's still available. It's in that duo pack with um, Lemon Lime Twist uh, little ribbon. But, so what I did for this card is I colored it as I like to do. I colored it in Berry Burst because that's my contrasting color that I'm using here. But I wondered, and so now you, I need you to help me. Get your little fingers ready for your comments. Should I color the ribbon again on the second card I'm going to make, or should we leave it because it is petal pink and it matches the paper? Should we leave it and have a petal pink bow just to be different? Cindy Howard, physicing, finishing physical therapy and got home. Good. And good to do your physical therapy. Good girl. So let me know what you think. Petal pink ribbon or should we color it berry? Let me know. I'm going to wait a few minutes because this is the next step where we are. Because what we need to do is we put it under here before we glue this piece down and we're going to tie a bow. Leave it, leave it. Okay, I'm getting leave it. All right. Okay, color it. <laughs> the majority is leave it this time because we have the sample of color. So, okay, thanks. So we'll give it a try of leaving it. Oh, thank you for sharing, Cindy. Leave it in petal pink, Lori. Okay, let's leave it. We've got it, I've got it. So we'll, we'll leave it and I'm gonna cut quite a bit because you know I like to have tails that I can play with. So what we're going to do is just tie this on the right side of our, um, did I do that right? Let me get, make sure I've got plenty of ribbon coming this direction. So we're just going to tie it on the right edge here. So that's, I'm glad you decided that because that's kind of what I want to do too. So we can see it both in the petal pink, let me get that out of the way, both in the petal pink and in the berry. And this will make the card even softer. And it's a thank you card with that the words gratitude. So I'm going to turn it over in the back. Yep, I've got it flat because sometimes it flips over. Okay. And we'll just get our bow tied right here. Make sure you can see that. Put it up a little more like that. So what I like to do, just a little hint, is to use the ribbons kind of in the direction they're going. Like this looks like it's supposed to go this direction, right? So that's why we're going to, the, the ribbon itself kind of tells you what to do based on the direction it's going. So let's, we don't want the bow to completely take over, so we'll, we'll make it a little smaller and pull it tight. Okay, isn't that cute? It, I'm really glad you chose that. It looks really pretty. Okay, more people have chimed in, leave it, so we did the right thing. Okay, um, so now you want to get that straight on the back, and the same distance from the corner. And then what I like to do really is just put a little glue close to the ribbon, not completely under it, just close to it, because I've learned my lesson, and sometimes I want to adjust the ribbon once I glue it on. So I try not to glue under it. Okay, and we'll just put this right on here, just like that. Okay. Wow, that does look very pretty. Okay, let's get our card base. Let me just press a little bit more. We've got those long tails. I don't like to cut them off until the end. So here's our card base, and then on the top, this is an easel card. We need it to go this way. For those of you who tuned in late, we're making an easel card. Let me press that down again. And so this piece ends up going right on top exactly. This, this piece is a full five and a half by four and a quarter. And it also forms the front of the card. Let me put that up where you can see it better. You still haven't decided if you want the zinnias, Vicki. Well, maybe we'll convince you because I think they're beautiful. And this is one of the papers, shockingly. So this is how this one is going to go. It could also be a baby card, right? These colors are kind of 
very soft like a baby card. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some stamping. Alrighty, so we are going to get this big stamp, the, the main zinnia stamp, and I've got my Berry Burst ink. And so there, there are several white pieces here. Let me show you. There's this one that goes on the front, and there's this one that goes on the inside, and this one for the sentiment. So we'll do the one for the front first, and I have written down for you, it's three by three and a quarter, this piece. And I've already pre-cut it, and I'm putting it on here so that I don't get... I've moved my... Um, my glass mat, I use it all the time when I'm working, but it really limits the space I have here. So I've taken it off when I'm working with you guys because I need, it helps me to have more space right here because I have a lot of stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna stamp the zinnias kind of right in the center and I'm trying to get the leaves on the paper. Isn't that so beautiful? This is why, um, Vicki, you don't need to color it or anything. It is gorgeous. That is so gorgeous. Okay, now we're going to get our inside piece. And for this, we want to stamp a little bit over to the left so that you have, because this is where you would write, you know, whatever you want to say on your card. They are stunning, Roz. I totally agree. And. I want to make sure I get plenty of ink on there. And so I want to have this a little bit to the left. There is less room. We'll get less of the stamp on here. Isn't that just so pretty? Okay, those are the zinnias. While we're at it, let's stamp our envelope. Get that done while we've got our big stamp going here. And we're just going to stamp this in the corner. I did read somewhere where the post people don't like anything on the bottom. Oops, there's a little boo-boo there. Okay. Oh, it must have been some little fuzz. Um, where the post people don't like anything down here. But, you know, I don't know. I can't help it. I like it. I do. I really do. I like to put stuff on my envelopes. So I think unless a postman really tells me don't do it. I think I'm going to try. Keep doing it. All right. Now I'm going to lay this over here. There's a little ink there, but it's going to be the background. Okay. Oops. I did get a boo-boo right there. That is not good. Okay. This is one of our good pieces. So let me turn this over. Let me just get another one of these. That was a boo-boo. Okay. Let me get another one of these. A nice clean one. And I'll turn my piece around. This is the piece that goes on the inside. And I'll do it again. Okay. Try it again. And there's nothing, make sure there's nothing over here. Okay. Okay. Being careful. Now I'm going to put this one down for our sentiment. Some of these darker inks are dangerous. They are, I'm telling you. <laughs> okay, this, yes, I'm just getting ink all over my myself. Um, this is, a, I think, a really neat kind of shaped sentiment about gratitude. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut the paper after I get the stamp on. Words fail to express my gratitude. Isn't that nice? I really like that. Okay. Now I think we'll go ahead and start with our sentiment because that helps us because we're going to get our little place for the uh, for the um, easel to to stick. So I'm going. All right. Let me tell you the size of this piece. This piece is um, three and a half by seven eighths. Okay, so I'm going to cut the seven eighths first. 
which is 1 8 before an inch. I'm so glad our paper trimmer has so many great markings on it. Okay, so there's our 7 8 and then we want it to be three and a half. So if I remember from before, I just left a little space there, it works out fine. So let's turn that around and we'll go to three and a half. Yeah, that works out great. So I basically stamped first and then cut around the sentiment. And then I want to put a little piece of berry behind it that just um, exceeds exceeds it by an eighth of an inch just to add color. So this one is going to be three and five eighths instead of three and a half. So three and five eighths. Okay, let me go. Three and a half and one eighth. Okay, three and five eighths. I hope I have that right. Okay, three and five eighths by one. Okay, so there's our one inch right there. And this should exceed, it should just give a real nice small border, which it does. Perfect. Okay, great. So we can actually go ahead and uh, glue this. And we can put this right on our card right away. Come on, glue. Okay. You want to be careful not to get that outside of the edge because that comes pretty close to the edges. So let me move it a bit, which is why I love my multi purpose liquid glue. Okay, there we go. Now let's get our easel card. So this is how it looks right now. We've just put this piece of designer series paper here and it's going to fold and the easel will go there. But it can't form an easel unless we put kind of what might be called the backstop of it down. And you need to raise it on dimensional so that it catches that paper. So that's what we're gonna do. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and put, you could put three or four dimensionals on here. Um, I think three will work, but you want it to be stuck on there nice and strong so that it doesn't move. So we're going to center it, try to center it, which is a little bit easy with the dots. And I'm going to put it right there. I think that is about right. Okay, so we've got that part, and see how this is going to, that just, once the other piece is on there, it's just going to stick right in there like that, like a little tent, like that. Okay, so now we're ready. We already have this piece that's going to go on, and we want to put our larger piece on there with dimensionals, and so I'm going to get more, get my dimensionals back out. I might try to find some berry looking gems on this one to add a little more of the berry color to the front. I didn't use any gems on the first card, but I might. The sentiments put the set over the top for you, Roz. They are beautiful. Yeah, Lori, I never come away from an ink pad unscathed. <laughs> If I use, Julia, if I use dark ink, it gets where it's not supposed to go. I'm telling you, it really does. And I'm usually pretty good. I try to be really careful, but okay. So basically what I want to do here is look at my distance between these two points and put it in the center of that. And also top and bottom kind of. And again, the little dots on the paper really are helpful because I was able to get it there pretty straight. Okay, now I think it's time to cut off the tails because we don't want them in the way when we glue the easel part on. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave them like that. I, may, I might cut them closer in a bit. So the important, this is the important part, okay, along with the sentiment strip. What we want to do is glue this piece 
only on to that lower section. And now again, this is exactly the same size as the front of the card. It's five, it's five and a half by four and a quarter. And you can see that when I put it out like this, okay? And the way you know how to glue it is the piece that's going to make the little tent, you're going to glue the lower section of this piece right on there. So that's why I find the location, I spread it out, and then I'm going to put my glue only here. And bring it in about a quarter of an inch from the edge so that it won't pop out. And then, because we want it to be real secure, I normally wouldn't do that, but we really want it to stick there. And then nothing should get anywhere else. No glue should get anywhere else. And then you're just going to lay this right exactly on top of that piece. Edges matching exactly. I hope I'm doing it so you can see. So match the edges exactly and press down. And just leave it a minute because you really want that to stick there. This is what actually makes the card. Is when you adhere this piece. So I'm just going to... And it's only adhered about halfway up. Okay, and then you can see the back. It's not adhered in there. Here's the front, and ta-da, it just sticks right in there. Let me hold it up more so you can see. It just sticks right in there, right behind the sentiment. Isn't that cute? So now we're going to finish it by putting the inside, and see when, you, when they take the card out of the envelope, it looks like a regular card. And they could open it like that, and we're going to put the sentiment piece inside right now. But hopefully they'll figure out that it, they can stand it up like that. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and put our sentiment piece in. That was that bad side that I made a boo-boo. Shh, don't tell anyone. I never like to tell my mistakes. Okay, and card, make, card makers never tell. I don't know if that's a saying, but I think it should be. Okay, and we're going to put this up at the top-ish because we don't want it to be down here to compete with the sentiment or the fold or anything like that. So that's in, and there's our card. Just like that. So when you get it, you open it, and there it is, and the, you will write in there. And then we have already our cute envelope to go with it. Yes, thank you. Shh. <laughs> Isn't that darling? And I think, okay, what I, I do need to cut these down, but what I really like about it is that it's, um, it's not loud color-wise. Sometimes I like loud color. You know, all the different colors that are in the zinnia paper are beautiful. But for this one, I just wanted it to be, it's almost kind of formal looking, don't you think? I don't know if we have any berry burst um, gems here. I don't see anything that looks very berry bursty. Although, those are kind of too pink. I think I'm just going to leave it as is. I, I like it that way. And I hope you do too. Okay, so there's your um, easel card, your fun fold easel card. And let's come back now. and I'll give away a prize. So, thank you guys, I like it too. So the prize for today, you get to take your choice, and if you're on, the, if you're on here today, you can, make, <clears throat> you can make your choice in the comments. But if, you're, if you happen to be here, here at between, during the week, and like on YouTube or over here, and you're watching the replay, you can email me at peggy at prettypapercards.com and let me know. But let me see. Um, well, I haven't awarded the other card, but I'm going to tell you about the prize for next week, just because we're doing it. So the prize for next week is either going to be the card we made today or a roll of the ribbon we used. So that, yeah, so you can't write it in here because you don't really know. So for next week, if you win, you'll get to choose one of these two things. Maybe I should just give them both. I'll give them both as a prize, so you don't need to choose. 
that'll be the prize for next week. That's a pretty prize. It's kind of an Eastery prize, and this weekend is Easter, so it that'll be the prize. That's what you're saying prize for this time. Okay, now the prize that we're giving away from last week is the card that we made with um, uh, peach pie. <laughs> these, you know, these names, I, I work hard at them, but sometimes they fly out of my brain. Peach Pie. This is the card we made last week. It was um, kind of a copy of what we made it on stage. This was one of the patterns they had it on stage. And the winner is, I think she's on here, Marsha Fonte. Marsha, congratulations. You won the card and I will get it out in the mail to you. It's, I think it might be a like a design. I don't know if you know, but in the new catalog there are designs um, that you can copy. They're giving card designs, which is a new thing, and I think this might be one of those that they had us make there. So congratulations to Marcia Fonte, and thank you all so much for um, watching and being here. And um, I'll, I don't think I'm going to be here on Friday. I might change my mind, but it is Good Friday, so I'm kind of thinking I won't be here. So have a wonderful, wonderful